Yo ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Ordinary E. Uh, this could be the final episode uh, of which we're building this free PC. All the parts we've got for free. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe and like and hit the notification bell for more videos so you don't miss any more videos. Um, but yeah, let's get into this final episode, possibly the final episode, hopefully the final episode. Um, let's get into it. So, if you remember from the previous videos, we picked the motherboard, the best motherboard that we managed to salvage out of all the PC parts that we got, which is the Acer 1151, was it? 1156? One of those. Doesn't tell you on the board, but I'm going to have to look up the Acer HD1HT, no, H61H2-AD board so I can figure out all these other components. It's an Intel socket LGA1156 I believe it was. We've managed to fix the pins in there hopefully. Although I can see, see some dodgy ones there but hopefully they work still. We've got this backing plate on the back. I don't know if you can see all that clearly. which I'm going to leave in place for the Intel Intel chip. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to lift up this plate here. We're going to get the I Intel i5 chip. What was it again? An i5-2328 chip. And on the chip you've got a little a little triangle in the corner. You see that? It's a little triangle, little gold triangle in the corner. Now that lines up with a triangle on your socket. Now there's no obvious, but there's a little triangle here on the circuit board. See that there? Let's see if I can get you closer. See that little triangle there? Right there. So I assume that the triangles line up. So I'm going to put the CPU in that way. We're going to hope nothing blows up once we turn it on. So what I'm going to do is lay the CPU in. Skip. No pressure, just a little tap just to make sure it doesn't wiggle. We're going to pull that back down. Clip it into the nut. And then this does require a little bit of pressure. And I think it just, yeah, just goes in there. And that's your CPU installed. Hopefully it still works because you remember from the last episode of bent the pins, trying to clean the board. Silly. Um, but yeah, that's that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to put some RAM. The best RAM we managed to salvage was this RAM which is the Kingston 2 gigabytes and it's 2R times 8. So two rows of 8. Yeah, there's four chips there and there's four chips and there's eight chips on the back, eight chips on the front. Um, there's a PC3, and I think it's 1 hertz, 1.6 one, 1. hertz. Not the, not the fastest RAM, not the greatest RAM, obviously we wanted uh, minimum 8 gigabytes. And you want maybe above 3000 hertz, so we're nowhere near those. But um, we've got two sticks of these, so that gives us 4 gigabytes of RAM, and all we do is we, you've got a notch here in your RAM. And you've got a, a similar matching protruding plastic piece that you're going to line up with your with your RAM stick. Give it a press down so the clips are out. See the two clips on the on the side, and you're going to push that down. But I'm going to need a surface, so push that down pretty hard until the clips both clip in. 
and do the same thing with the other one. So that's the CPU and the RAM installed. Now the next thing we're going to want to do is a cooler. Now we have a few coolers if you remember but they're all Intel coolers so it doesn't really matter which one we choose. It should fit the mount. They've all, they've all been cleaned up. for it. So we can now put this to the side a second. All right, so here are the coolers. We've got a, a blue one from Foxconn. So those pieces went together. This was the one that was on on that CPU originally, but this is the Cooler Master one now. It's a little bit smaller, but I don't think it's gonna make much difference. So I wanted to go with this because it matches the Cooler Master case. What do you think? Doesn't tell me if they're quicker, quicker or not. The connections are the same. This is obviously the newer one. But I think we'll go with the Cooler Master one, cause just because we can. Um, so that, I think this one went in there. We'll just line those up, give it a push. Okay, that clips in. And then we're gonna need a heat sink. How did that go? I think it was this one. Yeah. So those have, can you see that line? That's uh, where the clip will clip into, I believe. Could be wrong, of course. Maybe it goes that way, yep. That clips on, and then that's gonna go on top of our CPU in the standoffs. Yeah, so that fits. So that backing plate protrudes right through and you've got the four standoffs that come through there. And that's gonna line up with this. The first thing I wanna see is the, where does the CPU fan go? And it looks like it's this one up here because it says CPU fan. So in order to have less of this cable showing, I want to position this in a way I can connect it, but also try and hide it, which will probably be that way around, but it's not very hidden. Let's see if I just undo this, get more slack. come around and maybe hide it so if that went in still not going to reach it's going to have to be that way okay so we will put that back on in a loop not too tight you don't want to break it and then that's going to go in like so. But before we do that, we need to put back thermal paste. I'm 
so we've got some thermal paste here it's the MX4 thermal compound I got it off Amazon if you want one this is probably one of the top one of the top ranking uh, thermal compounds I think there's a Noctua one that's really good I'll put a link down below to this one if you're interested in getting that it comes with a spreader there's multiple ways of, uh, of, do, of doing this you can either put a P drop or you can put lines or a zigzag um, all the tests that I've seen online from other YouTubers, they um, the results are minimal negligible so it really doesn't matter I think I'll go for there's a cross one as well so I think I'll go for a cross one like so and we should be good it's only a small amount don't need very much now we're gonna have to line this up It actually doesn't line up okay so we can't use that which is a shame we're gonna have to go with which one lined up So we're going to have to go with the other cooler because that one isn't big enough. So again, this one has notches in if you've taken your cooler apart. And we slide this gizmo back over. Like so. We're going to use the bigger fan that it, that it came with. And that's that so again I want to see how much I can lose the cable within so it looks like uh, don't really want it hanging out there so maybe I'll do that trick where we loop it in pretty well hidden so we'll go this way and we'll just line this up carefully that fits like a glove Get a screwdriver now. And what you want to do is just hold it in place carefully and then do it in a cross section, just tighten up, start tightening up the screws. So one there, a couple of turns on the opposite screw, a couple of turns on that screw, and then a couple of turns on this screw. So you're doing a cross orientation. And go back to the first one, go back to the second one. This is so that you're getting even pressure. And just do two or three turns, like so. And then just keep doing that until you feel there's enough pressure.
feels like these screws go on forever. How much pressure do you need to put? I don't know. But just keep going in a, in a crossword fashion. Obviously, don't copy me. I'm not quite following the cross pattern, but I am trying to. All right, so the screws then stop eventually. And that's your cooler installed and hopefully the heat spreader you can see it coming out the sides so the thermal paste has completely gone in I can't really show you in the side there but you can see it squeezing out a bit and that's the CP cooler fan installed and then we're just going to plug this in it's got uh, indicators on your on your connector where it goes into the CPU fan connection so we're just gonna follow that be very careful because the pins are long and thin and you don't want to bend them so that feels like it's going in let me just double check all right so our CPU cooler is installed now this cable we can just try and hide under there for now. So that when it's in your case, all right, it's not great, but you are going to see it. Um, very long that cable. Let's see if I can shorten it. A few more loops. There we go. I think that's the best I'm going to get that. Um, and that's it guys, so you put your RAM in, you put your CPU in, you put your cooler with your thermal paste in. Now it's time to install it into the uh, case. So this is my first ever time doing this. So if I've done anything wrong, let me know in the comments below. So let's move all this out of the way a second. We're gonna grab the case. Who recognizes that? All right, so here is the case, and this will go into this kind of orientation. Right, which means uh, I'm just checking here. Don't worry, I'm just checking the standoffs because if you remember, I installed some standoffs already and they're in for another board, but that board's obviously not going to work, so I need to change these standoff orientations. So I need one there and one there. I have those, those ones match. Those ones match. I need to move that one up. Okay, so, oh, there's another one. Do I need that one? So one, two, three. There actually isn't a place for that one. these things little standoffs I'm just moving those into the to match the board holes and then also before you put the motherboard in 
you're going to need an IO shield. So I'll salvage one from the other case. So here's an IO shield. This one's quite fancy. It's got like padding and stuff and colors. But yeah, I've never seen that before. It's got like a padding. So all we do to put the IO shield in, um, we check the orientation. So that lines up with that. And that's the way we're going to put that in into into our PC case. There's a slot here, and hopefully it just fits in. It was probably made for the other case, but oh well. It's kind of going in. See what I'm doing? I'm trying to just plug this into the opening. Kind of fit. Oh, there it goes. That's the problem when you're trying to fit. Oh, it does fit nicely. Okay. Happy with that. And there we go. So the IO shield is very securely in. And now we can install a motherboard. Let's make sure nothing's in the way. And if you're worried about earthing, there's YouTube videos that shows it's very minimal static from your own body when you're touching electronics. There is some, but it's not enough to cause any damage. Um, to be on the safe side, but if you touch any metal, it will earth you, take the static away. So that's good enough. I, that's what I, um, I've seen on, YouTube, on other YouTubers. I'm not sure how accurate that is, but that's what I've heard, that if you just touch a piece of metal, it will earth you and take away the static in your body. And that's good enough for what we're doing here. So now the motherboard's all lined up and it's inserted very nicely into the IO shield. And you can see your standoffs grinning through. We're gonna need to screw down the motherboard. Now what screws do we want to use for that? Let's use these ones. It looks happy in its new home. Plenty of room. Yeah? Perfect. So I've got six screws on this motherboard to screw down. There was eight but two of them won't be able to so six should be enough let's start with the most difficult one which wasn't so difficult that's great Helps to have magnetic screwdriver, clearly. Doesn't matter which screws you're screwing first or 
any order there, so that's good. And that's it. So, I don't know if you can see that, but typically that's a screw. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, all gone in. And now it comes. Oh, and by the way, remember I was trying to put the, the uh, hard drive in, I'm trying to put that into the uh, into the bay, but I've, there's, there's something missing here. There's a, like a rails or a case that this first screws into and then they slide in. So I'm going to look into the other cases and see if there's any of those, then we can sort that out. Um, and that's it guys, you've basically built your computer, you put your fans in, your power supply, your CPU, your RAM, your fan, cooler fan, you've connected your cooler fan, and now it's time to just sort out, plug everything in. So, let's see what we've got here, we've got another fan, case fan, we need to plug in, we've got another case fan over here we need to plug in. So for that, I'm going to need to do research the board and see where those are on the board. There's one up there. What does that say? That says a system fan. Looks like we've only got one. Hmm. Do we only have one for this motherboard? So. Try and be a bit neat. Thread this wire through. Can you see anything I'm doing here? You can't. Can you? I can't even see myself. So, thread this one through. Come out the back. So I'm just threading this case fan through here. And then I'm going to go back in. So that none of that wire and that cable is showing. So I threaded that wire back around the back and then it's come out the front. No, so it's come back out through here. And then this is only a three pin. So we use the first, so we're trying to plug it into there. We use the first three pins. Very gently. And that's gone in. So that's a system case fan and then what you can do with the excess is just you see pull that pull that slack out. Looks a bit neater I guess. Not sure about the colour of the cables but it is what it is. And then we can stick that down at the back so it doesn't look too messy. Now I really want to be able to install another fan, but I don't see on this board any more fan headers. Because I have the front fan and the back fan and I want to blow the air through, but that's that. Let's see what else we can connect. So the next thing we'll connect is the motherboard power. So that's going to be the big long 12 pin scenario which is that one there, can you see that? And this this clip will line up the notch on the board so that's relatively simple and this one seems higher so take it out of that hole and go in the hole above. Will that give me enough bend? Not quite. I mean there's enough but if I can get this in. Yep, 
Yeah, she's gone in. So, can you see that? Okay, take it down to this bit. And that's gone into the 12 pin. Quite nicely. And I've just looped that out. So you can't, that's that cable in. The next cable we want to power up is the CPU cable. And I believe that's like a, yeah, that's a four pin up the very top. So one of these is the CPU. Now this is PCI. I think this one said PCI. Yeah, so PCI Express cables are for, there's a slot, there's an extra slot here. I think this is where the graphic card goes. So this powers that, but it's not. So we don't need those ones yet. Graphics cards, <laughs> can't even get a graphics card. And then I have a eight pin. There's an eight pin here and a four pin. Well, it's a four pin because I've only got four pins there. So we'll, we'll, we'll be using that one. So again, just a little fault in the beginning will help with cable management in the end. So let's bring these back out here. So I'll just show you what I'm doing here. So I've pulled these cables back out the back. This is the cable we want. And we want it to go near the top through here. it through like so and I'll just lay it down again for you guys to see Interesting that popped out. Okay, so now we've got our cable coming out the top. We're going to plug it in. So. so again, I don't know if you can see that one. Can you see that one? It just came out through the top and plugs into the four pin at the top of the board. Okay, very good. So now we have power to the motherboard and we have power to the CPU. We've plugged in a case fan. What else is there to do? Mm, power switch. No, we don't have power switch for the front because we couldn't put one in. Alright, so if you remember on the last video, we managed to get these cables. One was the power switch and reset, but I couldn't get it to fit the case. But I'm going to have to just put it in as it is um, to give us power. Okay, so we've got USB headers. This is going to, so this would be just for your front panel if you wanted USB at the front, but we can't put this in, I don't believe. Um, but we do want a power switch, which is here. So we've got two switches, we've got something that comes with LEDs, LEDs on there. Now it was the orange and white was the power, and the other one would be reset. And then on the other side, we've got all the connectors. So you've got power LED, plus, power LED minus, power switch, reset switch, and HDD light. Okay, so where do these go? Let's figure that out. There's a bank of pins here. 
there's audio here it says what does that say don't know okay so I think it's this bank of pins here but it doesn't tell me plus minus or what so I'm gonna have to look up the motherboard online okay so I've got the manual downloaded here I don't know if you can see that but the pins are down in this right hand corner for the front panel and they go one at the bottom, two at the top, three at the bottom, four at the top, five at the bottom, six at the top. So, and then you need to install it sideways. So it's saying for the power button, connect pins two and four. So that would be the two top ones. Two and four for the power. Does it matter which way it goes? Ooh. This is where we could create fire. Okay. So this is the power. Two and four. So one and two would be the bottom. So one, two, three, four, two and four. One, two, I put it in the wrong place, hold on. No, supporting the power on or function requires connection six and eight. So six and eight. So one, two, four, five, six. So it's the third one in. Like so. All right, that's one connector in. And then the reset is five and six, five and seven. So that's the bottom ones. Well, they could have made this a little easier, right? And then your LEDs, one and three. One is positive, three is negative. So. Okay, so those are in. So yeah, two or four, the ones at the top. Two. Two is positive, four is minus. So positive is the green one. It goes into, now I need to get four in. So I think I've installed the power button and reset switch correctly. I'll just show you. So you see how those pins focus is. So I'll put all these in. Okay, so the front panel connectors are connected. That was quite finicky. I've put the letters facing down. I don't know which is the right way. But now we have a power cable, which I can't use. But Okay, so the last thing to do would be to put a graphics card in. Graphics card, I don't know how good it is, but it's a Sapphire HD, HD 2, 2600 XT. And these are the connectors it has. I think they're VGA connectors, which isn't great, but 
you know, we'll put it in, we'll see what it does. And that will go in your PCI slot. And then the power for that, is that up here? So we'll just put that in. The card has popped in. And then you just screw, I'm gonna use this screw here. Screw down your graphics card. I don't know how it's going to get power. You see this, guys? So I just screwed it in there. Let's fit it in. Okay, so our graphics card is in, screwed in. I was looking for power for it, but I guess it doesn't need it or it takes it from the motherboard somehow. Um, that's it. So the only last thing to do was to install a hard drive. I think this is the one that was had the OS on it. And I did manage to pull off some of these these rail things, so I don't know if these work for this. So we'll try it. So how would that work? Yeah. Yeah, see, so, so they slide in. Okay, so we need to put these on. So I'm just putting these rails on come with these push oh. don't have screws they just come with a like a push a push screw I don't know what that's called now we should be able to fit this in yes like so okay good so that just slides in now um, and now we need to connect it so we'll go to the back and now all of these cables are redundant I forgot about that one. I need to earth. Do I need to earth? Maybe not. Maybe we do. Maybe we do. So at the moment it's looking pretty clean. We've managed to keep our system cables under control a bit. But we don't need any of these at the moment. So let's move that up here. This power supply also has a ton of power connectors here. Quite good, really, but overkill for what we need um, for the hard drive. So we need a power. We need to put some power to it. So let's take one of these and connect. Just figuring out which way that way. Not that way. Yes, that way. And I can add more drives. That's the power. And then we want to be able to transfer the data. So we stick one of these in.
Okay, so we've hooked up our hard drive, we put the data transfer in there, and we've put the power. Now all of these cables are redundant for now, but we won't put it away just yet because we want to test the system. So it's time to see if it powers up. What do you reckon guys? Is this thing going to power up? It might explode. Stay tuned for the extravaganza. Okay, so let's spin the system around. Oh boy, it's the moment of truth. give you one final look of what I've done so there's the PC all installed there's not really much more other than to power it on and see what it does so I think we need yeah we need a power plug for this so I'll put the power plug in that's accepted we need a monitor. God damn it. So we know this is a working monitor, so we'll bring this around. Well. I need to connect this. old VGA connections that's connected I might just bring you guys around so you can see oh dear everything's breaking all right guys so it's time to hook everything up so we've got the monitor connected to the PC we've got the power on this is our makeshift power button let's bring that through um, let's connect the keyboard because why not Alright guys, so we've connected the keyboard and the mouse to it. Moment of truth, will it turn on? Okay, we've got the monitor on, are you ready? So I understand if I press, <laughs> if I press one of these, which is this one, we may get power. Oh, the fans are spinning, which is a great sign. Will it post? Two beeps, what does that mean? There's nothing posting. What could be wrong? Okay, so it hasn't posted, I'm going to need to play around with it and see if I can get it working. Alright, so I've removed the graphics card because that's the only thing I can think of that maybe, or maybe do I need to connect the graphics card to 
to the monitor. Hold on a second. So I've got two beeps on the startup. I don't know what that means. But I looked on the internet and they say replace the battery or the CMOS. But the only thing I can see that's different here is this graphics card. Okay, so I can't I can't actually put this graphics card into the monitor anyway. I don't have the connector. But I have a bag of cables, so maybe that's what it that's what I need to do. Alright, let's just connect the monitor without the graphics card. Alright, take two guys. Will the PC turn on without a graphics card? Now, that might be the problem. Let's try it. Fans are spinning. Which is usually a good sign. Oh, we got one beep this time. Let's check the LEDs. Red lights. That looks like that's the uh, hard drive. So if you ever wondered, and we've got a post. Yes, it works. Will it go all the way? I guess it does, right? So if you ever hear that noise grumbling in your computer, it's the hard drive. So these old hard drives, it's as if it's belly's rumbling. But yeah, okay, we've got a, looks to be a working PC. Just checking the disc for whatever reason. Fixing the disc. That looks like it's gonna take a while. Um, let's get the, the other fan working. I just don't know where to connect this three pin into. There's nowhere for me to connect it. But good news guys, it looks like it's uh, posted. It's just doing some checks, it's gonna take a while. Um, if you like the video and you want me to see me do more to this PC, then hit the subscribe button and press the notification bell so you don't miss any more videos because I don't send out videos often, uh, regularly, like weekly or whatever, I do it whenever I've got time. And yeah, what do you think of this PC? I mean, I've got to fix the power cable, so we'll probably do a video of me trying to find a way of where to put the power cable. All right, guys, there we have it. We have a working PC all built. Um, I know it's a bit dark and it was hard to follow along. But thanks for thanks for watching. Um, I'd really appreciate it if you can hit the like button and subscribe. That'd be much appreciated. What I'm going to do is tidy this all up, set the PC up so it's ready for gaming. Um, in the next video, we'll show you it performing. Um, and then what I'm going to do, as you can see, I've got all the PC parts here. Um, and I think there'll be another computer to be made and I'm going to build it for you guys. So if you're interested in, in a PC that I'm going to make out of all this on the floor, <laughs> then um, stay tuned, I guess. Then uh, stay tuned. Um, as I said, hit the subscribe button and notification so you don't miss that. And for the giveaway... I'm going to ask you to name some things. Maybe join my Instagram. I'll put a link to that. Or actually, I'll flash it on the screen, maybe. Um, I'll put a link to my Twitch. I don't know how I'm going to announce it yet, but I'll build a PC out of all of that on the floor. And I'll give it away to one of you guys. It's not going to be top of the range PC. It's whatever I've got here. It's, a, as you saw, a J77 socket, 775 socket, a motherboard. I'm going to repair the pins. Um, but yeah, you can come along for that. Uh, just keep watching. There'll be some clues that I'm going to want you to answer, look out for and respond to to be able to win the PC. Um, I'll see if I can send it abroad. I don't know. Maybe I will just 
maybe it will go locally, maybe I can send it abroad, I'd have to figure out the cost of that. And just to celebrate the PC working, we will pour ourselves a nice glass of Coke, make sure it's got the fizz, because Coke tastes awesome and you need a lot of sugar when you're building a PC. <laughs> So, thanks to Coke, thanks to all the YouTubers on, on um, yeah, thanks to all the YouTubers that show us how to build a PC, because without you guys I wouldn't have been able to do this, so I've learned a lot, you want to keep learning, um, I still don't know what everything does or, or how it all should perform and stuff, but yeah, like I said guys, keep tuned, I'm going to keep doing videos, I'm going to keep doing PC builds, because I really enjoyed it, especially when it works. Uh, hit the subscribe button like I said notifications all of that and I will see you in the next video the next video is going to be all for you guys building a computer out of all that junk on the floor and I'll turn it into something pretty um, and then hopefully I'll be able to hand it over to one of you guys and we'll go from there thanks again guys much appreciated and I'll see you in the next one ta-da